what is up guys we're here at JRP headquarters and uh, today we have a little special YouTube video for you guys uh, because we're gonna be talking about oil systems pretty much what's available on the market uh, what are the budgets pretty much how wild you could get pretty much from mile to wild and we're gonna be talking about when is it necessary to upgrade them and it, is it even necessary to upgrade them so Ronnie What's going on, Jeffrey? Please tell the people about this. What's going on, guys? Yeah, so as Jeffrey mentioned, we just received a special delivery from our friends at Magnus Motorsports. Special shout out to uh, Matt at Magnus, um, which is our dry sum setup for Jeffrey's car. Uh, just kind of wanted to give you guys an overview of the 4G63 oiling system. Most of this stuff can apply to other vehicles as well, but we're specifically talking about the 4G63 stuff because that's what we got laid down here and. That's kind of what you know we specialize in obviously so the real question is why do people upgrade their oiling systems um i want to start by saying that the 4g63 oil pump from the factory you know that is housed in the front cover um is very sturdy these you know we've ran these up to 9500 10,000 rpms and usually they don't really have any issues and uh, you know, if you're, let's say you're two-stepping really hard to build boost off the line or something like that, like if you were using like an RB26 engine, for an, for example, or any engine that's like, has a oil pump that's driven off the snout of the crankshaft, uh, it can be detrimental, you know, you can break gears and stuff. But the 4G stuff, we haven't really seen that as much. Obviously, it still happens, you know, you do, you can break gears, you can have oil pump failures, it happens, but it's not as often as other cars and my point here is the oil pump to begin with is very strong uh the 4g6 speed motors after we do our balance shaft elite and uh our you know little tricks and stuff it still holds you know 100 110 pounds of oil pressure at wide open throttle uh, even with looser than factory bearing clearances so the oil pump is more than capable of creating oil pressure um, however, the problem becomes that the sump itself, so the oil pan itself, um, and the, the problem is that, uh, as you guys can see, this, uh, you know, this round area here is where the oil pickup tube is housed in. And whenever you're doing, you know, dig racing or endurance racing or, um, you know, autocross or whatever, anything that involves the car basically going under, like, uh, under, you know, G's, you know, the car pulls, you know, some G-force. Uh, specifically, when you're launching the car, you know, you're trying to leave off the line with like 25, 30 pounds of boost. Um, you know, it's at that point, they really, whenever the vehicle starts moving, all that oil kind of has a tendency to like slosh back at like a 30 to 35 degree angle. So it kind of uncovers the uh, pickup tube, or I should say it has the potential of uncovering the pickup tube, which you do not want because what happens is, uh, there's always what's called a hydrodynamic wedge between your bearing and your crankshaft journals and that's simply the pressurized oil from the oiling system between the bearings and the uh, crankshaft journals and you always want that uh, once the pump gets uncovered and let's say the motor is spinning at like seven eight thousand rpm the oil pump's obviously still doing its job it's still pulling whatever it can from the pickup but if it gets uncovered what it does is it picks up air because you know it's uncovered for a second you know for like half of it maybe oil half of it might be air so it'll pull that air and it'll actually cause what's called aeration um which is when air gets beaten into the oil because it gets pressurized with the oil pump gears and it goes to your you know oiling system and bearings and all that stuff so you obviously don't want that because if you don't have that hydrodynamic wedge you're going to be spending a lot of money it's a very costly thing so we want to avoid stuff like that so what people started doing many years ago is they started welding baffles around this pickup tube and that was very effective people still use it nowadays this is just a factory oil pan of the evo 8 evo 8 9 they're the same um so that was good for running you know sub 10 seconds in the quarter or you know whatnot uh, another option later became available was the ams moroso oil pan so this oil pan, as you guys can see, physically it's bigger. So it has the, uh, it actually holds about a quart and half off top of my head, I think quart and half of oil more. Uh, the more oil you can house in there properly, uh, the cooler the oil will be because you have more oil in volume. So it's gonna generally dissipate the heat better. Um, 
and you know you can just put seven quarts in this one because now it's going to just fill up all the way and the crank's going to hit it and you're going to run into all sorts of issues so this you get the benefit of actually being able to add oil in the sump which like i said has you know thermal benefits um also the way these baffles are created in there with the trap doors and whatnot and as you guys can see there's a trap door over there I guess over here, I don't know if you can see it. but that's a trap door so whenever you're taking you know left turn or right turn that thing kind of shuts it's kind of like the gtr stuff that we talked on a tech talk you know has trap doors so it doesn't let the fluid go back or forth so this is a very uh, simple and uh, you know effective i want to say way of you saving your engine you know when you're trying to you know maybe you're making a lot of power you're doing racing and you know you want to basically keep the oil again surrounded uh on the, around the pickup too so you know with that you can still run into issues where you're making a lot of power you know you're trying to run faster than nine seconds in the quarter and stuff like that you can still run into oil issues because you know these cars pull quite a bit of g so um once that happens the only option you really have is to go to a dry sump setup now the dry sump setup is like the king of the oiling system it's very very expensive you know compared to like your traditional oil pan upgrade you're going to be spending thousands of dollars but when you're building a race car of you know this magnitude like what we're trying to do with jeffrey's car this really becomes essential it becomes a part of the build you kind of have to plan for it from the get-go you know make sure it fits in your budget because when you're spending 20 dollars we're researching and developing and like you know you're trying to make everything the best as possible and you're you know putting the best parts in a car custom parts like you really don't want you know bearings to fail and you don't want to throw a rod out the side of the block and stuff like that because like i said we just there's so much hard work and effort into these cars so you really have to plan uh, plan for it uh, like my car wouldn't require something like this i'm fine with i, I was fine with the factory uh, sump because i don't launch my car my car was making four digit power but again i don't launch it i'm not i don't take turns obviously it's not an autocross car uh, but for jeffries we're definitely going to need some we definitely need a dry sump setup because of the nature that the car is going to be in. So what is a dry sump setup? Well, a dry sump setup is just that. The sump itself is technically, theoretically speaking, it's dry because it's really not dry, but it's called a dry sump because the oil doesn't get housed in the pan or in the sump, okay? So as you guys can see, a Magnus dry sump, this is the oil pan or what would go where the oil pan is and as you guys can see the first thing you guys will probably notice is this thing is pretty pretty short uh, compared to the factory you know oil pan and the morosa one so what this allows you to do for the you know road, road racing cars road racing cars i'm sorry like autocross car uh, guys and stuff like that they can actually drop the engine a few inches lower the center of gravity so you know get better um uh, handling or whatnot i'm not a suspension specialist but i don't know that stuff very well for the 4g stuff we don't do that but uh, that's one benefit you get from it one of the main benefits is now instead of having an oil pan that houses the oil you have this nice round tank that houses about nine eight to nine quarts of oil just twice the capacity of the 4g63 oiling system and uh, the neat thing or what really makes this special or magical is since it's round and the fluid gets filled up all the way to here and the pickup is here it doesn't matter how many g's you pull i mean this could be a jet and you can't physically you know push all the oil to one side and uncover that pickup so what happens is your bearings never run out of the, that hydrodynamic wedge that i was talking about Another benefit is this is mounted external, so it's not inside the engine physically. Again, thermal efficiency. The, you know, air hits the tank, pulls the heat out of it. And as I mentioned, it's, it has twice the capacity of the 4G63 wet sump. So what that means is it's gonna obviously dissipate more heat because there's more physically more oil. Um, also, another thing that's very, very important and very special with the dry sump stuff is as you guys can see there's plates in there plates with holes and stuff so there's actually a few plates and what that does is whenever you get the scavenge from the oil pan or wherever you get your scavenges from goes back in here you always have air basically beaten into the oil you know it's called frothing of the oil the air 
not aeration necessarily, it's actually called frothing, when the oil becomes like a milkshake pretty much. And that happens because in the nature of the combustion engine, when it's operating, when you're throwing a lot of boost at it, what happens is you always have blow-by, right? So you always have that crazy pressure in the crankcase. You have the crank that's spinning, the webs that are, you know, spinning wildly. You have the rods that are spinning. So all that stuff, basically, when you have that crankcase pressure, and uh, it's essentially what it is, is it's a lot of oil vapors is what it is, you know, because you get that blow-by across the rings, it goes in the sump, and now, you know, it hits the oil, and then it kind of, like, starts vaporing. So when the crankshaft hits it, it, it froths the oil. That's what happens. It basically beats air into the oil vapors. The oil vapors basically go down the back in the oil again and it becomes this like milkshake. Like it's it's what happens is again it goes back to that that oil pumps trying to pull oil and now you're putting a air and oil mixture which is obviously not efficient for lubricating you know uh, expensive engine components that are vital to the operation of the motor. So. Um, what those baffles do is they actually help pull that air out of the oil so you don't have that frothy oil going back inside um, so you're getting a fresh and clean i want to say oil supply where you know with the wet sump you wouldn't necessarily um, another thing is uh, as i mentioned I, I mentioned scavenge so this is a what's called a four stage pump okay you have three scavenging stages and you have one pressure stage. What does that mean? Well, this means that you can basically scavenge or pull out oil from any point on the engine as you'd like. Now Magnus gives us this nice um, billet little housing thing that goes underneath the engine so you can actually pull it from the bottom of the pan uh, and scavenge it back inside the tank. Remember, it goes back in the tank and then pick up, picks it up from here. So you get to choose your scavenges uh on the 4G63s um we're on jeffrey's car specifically we're going to be scavenging from the sump itself so from the bottom of the oil pan if you want to call it it's not really an oil pan anymore i'm just going to call it the pan because it's not an oil pan anymore <laughs> um some engines like the rbs for example have a tendency to dump oil in the head um and uh you know, the 4G63s do have that issue, but we re we put a Kigley uh, hydraulic glass adjuster regulator, which is basically controlling the oil pressure to 15 pounds. So you always have only 15 pounds of oil going through that cylinder head. Otherwise, you would be, you know, dumping whatever, you know, 100 PSI that it makes, it would be dumping in, in the head. And the, the whole point of what we're trying to accomplish with the dry sump system, with the wet sump systems, is to keep the oil in the pan or in the sump or wherever that we're going to be pulling it in sending it back into the engine again. Uh, you never want it to not be in the pan or not be in the tank in this case. So with the 4G stuff, you don't really have an issue with the oil pump or the engine dumping oil inside the head. However, with the RB stuff, they run into that issue a lot. Um, and obviously, if you know you have a six cord oiling system and two and a half cords are in the head, you know, you only have so much to work with in the pan. So you guys get to see where this becomes a problem. Same thing with the Subarus, with the EJ stuff. Flat four, dumps oil in the head, both heads. Uh, there's crankcase pressure. You know, there's a lot of blow by when they're making a lot of power. That oil can't physically drain back in there. So the dry sum, you can add two more stages and you can just put the stages there and uh, scavenge from the heads. Tractor pulling cars, they, you know, track, you know tractor pulling, the sport of tractor pulling, uh, they use some insanely big turbos, right? You can scavenge the turbos themselves to get the oil back in the pan or the sump or whatever. Um, or you can have more pressure sections if you really wanted to, to supply pressure to the turbos or whatnot. Uh, like I mentioned before, the 4G63 doesn't have that issue, so we're solely going to be um, scavenging from the bottom of the sump. Um, and there's a pressure port, obviously, that's going to pick up from the bottom over here and always feed high-pressure oil to your engine. Not froth it like you would with a wet sun, like I said. So benefits, you get to adjust your oil pressure. You can give it as much oil pressure you want. If it doesn't create enough oil pressure, you can you know, do stuff with the rotors. You can change the gearing. Uh, one reason I mentioned that is we were talking about that hydrodynamic wedge, right? 
So usually the looser the bearing clearance is, the cooler that hydrodynamic wedge is gonna be and the thicker it's gonna be. So you're gonna have more protection against parts flexing. Now this is a hypothesis because you know the billet cranks that we run are nitrided, uh, cryo treated, you know, everything done to it so it doesn't flex. But again, it's a hypothesis if the parts do flex, you know, you have that extra cushion of oil so it doesn't just go straight to the bearing. There's still a cushion of oil that it can beat on. Um, and again, it runs cooler so it's thermally more efficient for the oil. You, once the oil gets out of its operating, you know, ideal operating range, it doesn't matter what synthetic oil you use, it gets like 280, 300 degrees, you're depleting that oil. That oil film becomes useless pretty much. It becomes like water. The viscosity drops so much. So, but again, that's one of the advantages of the dry sump. I can go to physical, like let's say I want to go to 3,000, 3,500 on the mains for whatever reason, right? 4,000 on the rods or whatever. I'm just throwing numbers out there. I can actually physically give it enough oil pressure to meet the engine's demands, even with the looser clearances, where with the factory oil pump, you can't do that. You're limited to whatever the gears are. I mean, I'm sure you can modify it and stuff, but you still don't get the benefits of the device. So, yeah. And so now we're kind of going to talk about what goes in the place of the oil pump. So, or the front cover, I'm sorry. So the oil pump is housed in the front cover on the 4G63. Sits in the front of the block like this. This, I'm just gonna show you guys as an example, right there. Counterbalance shaft goes there, balance shaft goes there. Um, and as, as you see here, you know, you got a bunch of different ports for pressure and all that. The Magnus uh, billet front cover, you only have one pressure port, which basically goes from the pressure port here to the front of the oil. I, I guess this isn't the oil pan, but the front cover, I should call it. Pressurized oil goes through here. This is where your main galley sits on the 4G63. So the main galley gets fed with the high pressure oil. So as you guys can see, it's a nice billet unit. You got this idler pulley over here. And then you guys might be asking, how do you drive this pump? Well, Magnus Motorsports was kind enough to include this nice bracket that basically gets mounted to the motor. So this basically sits on the side of the motor on the, you know, towards the front of the vehicle. And then you got this thing, this pulley that goes on here. And you got a tensioner, and then you got a belt drive that goes on your dampener. In this case, we have a fluid dampener. I'm not 100% sure if it's gonna work with our fluid dampener. Usually it works with the ATI stuff, but the point is, you know, it goes on your dampener and um, is driven off your crankshaft. So, um, yeah, and then, you got some nice filters for the scavenges. So if it's, you know, if, you know, piston ring material breaks down, bearing material breaks down or whatever, you know, you don't pull that and put it back in the sump. So you're always getting clean, fresh uh, oil from the sump. Um, and we got a bunch of fittings so we can, you know, customize to our needs. You know, that's 16 a.m. and stuff like that. But yeah, we just wanted to give you guys a rundown of why we would go to a dry sump. Like I said, for Jeffrey's motor, excuse me, it's almost, it's, you, he has to have a dry sump. I mean, this car is destined for some crazy stuff and we can't, you know, put it through that abuse without being able to fit it, fit it with adequate oil. Because remember, um, oiling the engine is the most critical thing. You know, you can have the best components, but if it doesn't have that layer of oil between them, you know, you might as well trash the motor. One more thing that I want to touch up on before I forget, blow by gets significantly significantly reduced with a dry sump system the reason that happens is because whenever it's scavenging oil it's not only scavenging oil it's actually pulling vacuum and it's pulling all those um all those vapors or you know all that blow by gases out of the combustion out of the crankcase i'm sorry so anytime you have blow by you are basically shooting yourself in the foot because the blow by gases are fighting you directly fighting you against making power because the piston is trying to go down you have blow by gases from the other three cylinders that are trying to push this piston up and this is trying to fight through that air so if you're pulling that out you know if you don't have any blow by gases remaining in the crankcase you're that's free horsepower sitting right there i mean if you if a car is making like eight nine hundred horsepower like 50 pounds of boost like let's just take the 4g for example right 50, 55 pounds of boost. I don't care how tight they build that motor, it's gonna have crap ton of blow by. Let's say you take everything, you leave everything the same, you put a dry sump system on it, it's gonna make more power. 
It's absolutely going to make more power. I don't know how much exactly. I would guess in the region of at least like 30, 40 more horsepower. Again, just because it doesn't have to fight that crankcase pressure when the piston is trying to go down. So it's a win-win situation. Obviously, it has to be justified to you know pay five, six thousand dollars or you know however much it costs versus a wet sump system. But like I said, for a drag car, for a hardcore dedicated race car, you want this system. Also, um, we don't have this component right now. Uh, it's it's on the way to us, but they give you an external oil filter housing with the primer. So the reason we do that, well, first of all, the external oil filter housing is very convenient. You can mount it wherever you want. And the primer does what it's, you know, what the name implies. You can put a drill on it, prime it. As long as there's oil in here, it's gonna, it's gonna feed through the pump and it's gonna uh, go straight inside the engine. Um, the reason you do that on a dry sump is because when this tank is sitting here, gravity is gonna naturally drain this tank a little bit and it's gonna go back into the sump. So as the sitting, this is going to end up in here, again, from gravity. The problem with that is when you go to start the engine, this pump has to physically pull back from here, put it back in the sump, and then from here, feed it back inside the engine again. That can be problematic. Obviously, if the car is sitting for two, three days, that's going to happen. Gravity is going to do its thing, and, uh, you know, you're not going to just start the engine and not have wear. You know, that's that's going to damage some stuff. Uh, so it's, it's not, you know, just sunshine and, and rainbows, you know, you get your pros and cons with everything. One of the cons with a dry sump system is that every, I would say every two days, if you're going to drive the car, you know, to, to the grocery store and stuff, you've got to make sure that thing's primed because you want to make sure everything gets lubricated properly. So I, I unfortunately don't have that unit, so we can't share that with you guys. We can't show you, but in a later video or something, we'll probably show you guys. Uh, also comes with some nice mounting points. So we can actually mount it wherever we desire on Jeffrey's car. This is probably going to go behind the passenger side headlight. Um, I think that would be the best spot for it because the turbocharger is not going there. You guys are going to see where it goes. Um, but yeah, just wanted to give you guys a rundown of the oiling system on the 4G63, why we do these things and uh, what the limitations are, when you might want to consider, you know, dry sump or even an upgrade to your wet sump. Like I said, the more also path. Like this is what I'm switching to on my own car. Um, it's always, like I said, it's always a good idea to make the oiling system a priority because it's essentially what's going to keep your engine alive. You can have the best tune on there. You can have the best parts in the world, the most expensive parts. If you can't feed the proper high pressure oil to the bearings, it's trash. So yeah, thank you for watching guys. There you guys have it from mile to wild to extreme to extreme. Until next time.